are you doing? Are you coming down? <laughs> Goodbye. Can't find anywhere to sleep, huh? This big old house and you can't find anywhere to sleep. Hey, we have to help mom. Yeah, she's working hard to make us crackers. You need to go find somewhere to sleep? Are you a big boy? Can you figure it out on your own? Huh? You can? Okay, that's what I thought. All right, go get some sleep. We'll see you in a few hours. Those look good. They're done. They look perfect. They do. Can I, can I touch it? Yeah, I already touched it. Pretty hard. Nice. That's what you want from a cracker. I know. You know, we want a soft cracker. I'm happy with these. Yeah. So I want you to try one on camera because I already ruined it. What? You tried one? Uh huh. Oh, you cheater. But I kind of want to see what you think. Well, the chef does need to check. I want to see if it agrees with what I think. Okay, gotcha. Am I just supposed to figure out what it's supposed to be? No, it's a cheesy cracker. I would say it's a cheesy cracker. I think I could up the cheese. I agree. I want to try nutritional yeast. Yeah. For any of you like vegans out there, nutritional yeast people use as a cheese substitute. Yeah. It's supposed to have a lot of like B vitamins and other good stuff in it and vegan or not, stuff's pretty dang tasty. Yeah, it kind of has like a popcorn buttery cheesy taste to it, sort of, mm -hmm. nutritional yeast does. Cheese is good too. <laughs> right, except I'm pretty sure like just normal grated cheese isn't gonna work. The recipe oh. uses cheese powder. Uh, was there any oil? Yep. Uh, no, not not oil, butter. Oh, oh okay. I'm kind of wondering if oil might bring the flavor out a little bit more. That's just a hunch. I don't know. Maybe not. Pretty happy with these, so I guess I'll uh, put them in a jar. I think that if I found a baggie of these in my lunch, I'd be pretty stoked. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. And if you had like a little something to dip them in, like a mustard I'm or something like that. thinking homemade cream cheese. Yeah, homemade cream cheese. Yeah. Yeah, this is awesome. I, I fed the sourdough starter. I made six pizza crusts for the freezer. Yep. yep. I made a double batch of brownies because we had to dinner with some friends. And then this was the leftover was a double batch or a batch of crackers. Nice. So it's pretty good. Heck I think yeah. I'm carved out for the time being. So the yep. sourdough starter is back in the fridge. Yep. I think time we out. Can feed it once a week, but we're just practicing like making more of our own foods in this category. And I would think these will last for a while. Let's be honest, you're gonna eat them before they go bad, but yep. I would think they wouldn't go bad for a couple weeks. At least, yep. I mean, not as long as store bought crackers, but. No. Nice work. That feels good. Yeah. That makes me happy. Is it time to move on to the big project? Yep, the one they're probably more excited about. Yeah. And I'm more excited about too, to be honest. Mm, curious slash scared slash excited. Right. All right, I think we're ready to turn it on. Woo, cancel that. <laughs> I wonder if this is pretty normal. It's gotta be. So that means every time we fill our cisterns, we'll just have to run the well for a little bit. I think that makes sense for now. Well, we're drawing a lot of water off and then shutting it off and all that water is like bringing in sediment. So we gotta prime this obviously to get a good sample. Um, I guess we could take that too, but I guess we wanna <laughs> know kind of like, you know, what's in the well, I don't know. Maybe two samples? Nah, we'll just take one. No, I think I think it's fine because we're not we're not gonna put that in our cistern anyways. I think that's just sediment. Yeah, I think sediment. it's cloudy. Yep. The well guys run around pumping water out of wells like it's no big deal. They're like, yeah, it's whatever. Pump that one for four days, and I'm gonna go do this one for a couple days, and 
So here we are being all stingy with water because we haven't had any forever. So maybe exactly. we're just not being aggressive enough with like priming the well and getting the sediment Can't blame us. Out. We've been on water rations for yeah. years. So, you yeah. know. Well, we've already wasted more water than we used to use in 24 hours right. in the RV. So <laughs> yeah, it feels a little weird. That's looking a lot better though. I feel already, like, yeah. I feel like the sediment may be just right in the bottom. Let's dump that and just take another test after just literally a few minutes. Yeah, not even a couple minutes maybe. Okay, it's going in. Watch yourself. It's better, a lot better. Yeah, a lot better. It's not great, better. Um, I say let this run for a little bit, which I kind of figured we might need to do. I mean, but that's like two minutes. So let's give it 10 and see how it looks. That's looking a lot better. Perfect. Do you need to put this somewhere special? Nope, it's just water. Okay. Ready, Freddy? Ready, ready. Ago, Jesse got online to do some research to figure out what we need to do to test our well water. Is it something we can do locally? Is it something we need to mail off? Can we go to our local health department and they test the water? We don't have anything mandated stating that we have to test our water, but we feel like it's just the smart thing to do. Not that we're afraid of anything. We're not afraid of like drinking arsenic or whatever people's fears are. It's just more about having that knowledge about what is in your water. So that's what we're on a mission to do today is get our water tested. And it turns out all we have to do is bring a sample to some people, a relatively short drive from us, right? Yep. And we're in a weird situation because normally you would pay a company to come to the well and take a sample because they have a chain of custody. And usually it's because it's like a real estate transaction or something like that, or your or your mortgage banker wants a sample or whatever. Um, they said it would be $500 to come to us and get a sample, but they said we could bring it to them. Um, so they just needed a sterilized jar, about a quart, and they said we have 24 hours from the time we draw the sample to get it to the lab. And I think that's just to preserve the quality of the sample. Hopefully we'll get the results, like you said, in a day or two. Uh, I, I guess I don't know, we'll have to ask them when we get there. I feel like there's uh, very much this overtone around water that is fear-based. And it's because so-and-so's well had arsenic or so-and-so's well has nitrates, etc. And I think that well testing just makes sense. It's advised that it be done once a year. And I think because it's your own well or your own water system, just like the cisterns, you're responsible for maintaining the water quality. But I feel like there's also this perception that crystal clear water is healthy water. And that's not what we're trying to achieve. We just want to make sure that we understand maybe what options we have for treating the water to maintain the quality of the water system, the cisterns, the plumbing, the pipes, etc. And then also, of course, to protect our health in case there is some weird situation that either is currently happening or happens in the future. But I think most importantly, we just want to be informed. We're not like afraid of the water that's coming out of the well. It's simply knowledge. And then we're giving ourselves a fighting chance with installing treatment options. You can put in UV, chlorine, filters, all kinds of stuff. You could filter the living daylights out of water. But if it's not needed, you're simply adding additional cost and complexity that just may not be necessary. And I feel like this is the first step 
in kind of understanding how we're gonna proceed by using this water. When you build a independent water system or even like an independent power system like solar, you need to have resources available to you because there are just times where you're going to have to rely on someone else for something. And so I feel like having a good working relationship with a laboratory that we trust will help us to stay on top of our water quality and ensure the, the performance of the water system. But down the road, we want to explore other water options. We haven't ruled out rain collection, things like that, because water is water. And if it can be brought up to domestic standard, that's, that's a fantastic resource. We know that at one point in time, the wells in our area dried up and the result was a lot of community water systems. So we're not, we don't feel like because we drill a well and there's water, we're good. We still have a lot of research and a lot of development to do to really have a robust, uh, secure system. These people look like they know a thing or two about well water. This is very reminiscent of when we submitted our application to the power company. <laughs> it is. That it was feels, awkward. And it was exactly like a year ago. Oh, it was, huh? Right? This is this is what we do in winter. We have midlife crises every year and we overhaul I'll, our I'll life. I don't want to know what next year is going to be like. I know, right? Stay tuned. Feels weird to just be taking a big thing of my water to someone else. It's like, can you test this, please? I know, it totally feels like dropping off a pee sample. It does. You know, yeah. and like they're judging you based on the color of water. Yeah, they're like, oh, wow. And you're like, <laughs> wow or wow? Why didn't call these guys to see if we could do a walk in? We'll find out. So, who collected the water? Kay. Connie was collected in your name and mailing address, phone Kay. number, email. Got it. Where you collected kitchen or bathroom? Okay. Time collected. Gotcha. Okay. So, they gave us a little sample cup. Yeah, so they kind of have a system for that. It sounds like they actually have a drop-off uh, spot that's closer, closer to, to us. us, and they pick up once a week. And so he recommended before we actually like start using the well, which is pretty much where we are, maybe do one more test. It sounds like it's $120 for a water test. And then apparently these testing labs do mostly community water systems or government water systems like cities and stuff. He said this particular city here does 50 tests a month. Wow, that's crazy. So we had to get in line. And so we'll have to wait for the results just because they've got to get, you know, we get put in the queue or whatever. And then he said he'll email the results to us as they come in. So it sounds like there's multiple tests. They're right. doing a coliform test, well, the, the, a bacteria test. The bacteria test we should know in 24 hours. 24 hours, yep. And then he said the arsenic <laughs> test and the lead and the iron and all that might take a little bit longer. So anyway, so I think having a good relationship with them and kind of getting in a routine feels good. 120 bucks a pop though, so really take your time and like, right. yeah, don't be testing it every week maybe. But anyway, this is kind of fun. I don't know. Kind of excited slash scared to find out. Fly your inner nerd flag. <laughs> so what now? Do we just resume this video when the results come in? Yeah, I think maybe just get them all first. Sounds like with the report, they're going to provide, like Alyssa asked a great question. Uh, did they provide you kind of a range of what's acceptable or what's good or bad? So it sounds like once we kind of get all that stuff back, we'll have the full story and then we can tell them and we can either sob or we can jump for joy. That's a lot of elk. Wow, yeah. My goodness. Could probably count them if you're good. Maybe a hundred? Fifty? Mm -hmm. I'd say probably a hundred, yeah. We got the results, guys. Do you want to know what's in the well or what's not in the well? Do we have good and bad news? I don't know. I guess it's up for interpretation. It's a mystery. So apparently what happened was they actually ran three separate tests. The very first test is a bacteria test where they're looking for coliform bacteria or a bacteria test. And according to this, they basically just report the results in absent or present. If they find coliform bacteria, they then subsequently check for E. coli or Escherichia coli. I don't know how to say the bad it. bad stuff. Stuff you don't want to drink. Icky you can't stuff, pronounce it, don't want to yeah, drink it. Makes it in the news, everybody freaks out, that stuff. And that's the one that they need the sample for to do the 24 hour test. The second test they do is looking for mineral content 
and they're looking for a few things like calcium, iron, magnesium, manganese, and they actually do a pH test. And this is kind of where the hardness test comes from, but they also do tell you where some of this other stuff that I think more just like creates odor that's not very wonderful and odd flavors. So it doesn't really hurt you to have it in the water, but it doesn't smell great or taste great. So that's test number two. And then the final test they do is for the A word, arsenic. And they basically, again, do the same thing. They just tell you whether it's present or not. And if it's present, I guess they do tell you how much. And then as part of the arsenic test, apparently they check for nitrates and nitrites, which are naturally occurring, but they can also be from like runoff from fertilizers and garden products, farming, ranching, whatever. So they check for that. So those are the three tests that they did for us. So we can either give you guys the scale that they've been given us, or we can respond to each thing with emojis. I'm going emoji. Let's do it. Sold. So the first thing we got the results back for was a bacteria. Do you remember when we took the water sample in and we handed him the jar and he saw the little air bubbles and he goes, oh, oh, there's, there's something in there. And we're yeah, that wasn't like, reassuring. That's not cool. I don't know what, I don't know if it's because we boiled it or I don't know. Anyway. The good news is we currently have no E. coli in our water. Yay. Wait, hold on, let's put Alyssa's favorite bum, bum, like bum, bum, ba, ba. crazy crying laughing emoji. crying emoji. No coliform bacteria. It is absent. Yay. <laughs> when the well was drilled, the driller tossed a chlorine tablet down the wellhead. And the goal there obviously was to take care of any bacteria that might be present in the well. It did a great job, obviously. Now we've run 3,000 gallons, I think, through the well. We figured roughly based on gallons per hour. And there's still no bacteria present. So I think that's really reassuring. <clears throat> Let me kind of back up for a second. You can get any one of these tests a la carte. So we paid $120 for the whole shebang, like the homeowner package special dinner but you could just send a sample off for an E. coli test and, you, and I think it's like $25. So this might be something we wanna keep an eye on because with the cisterns, when you have water that's stagnant or stops moving, that's when, when bacteria becomes an issue. If you put hard water in a tank, like it's just hard water in a tank. Bacteria laden water in a tank, now you have an ecosystem and you also have, remember that movie? I can't remember the name Aaron of it. Brockovich. Finding Nemo. Oh. And you know how like the, the little grain of sand or something got in the filter and his fish tank became this like oh, dark, yeah. that. We'll probably keep a close eye on this one because that's the one that can get out of hand on the cisterns. So they check for each one of these minerals, magnesium, calcium, iron, and manganese. They give you the levels of calcium and the levels of magnesium but they don't really tell you what the levels mean. There's no interpretation. Is it good, bad? And I guess what they're trying to say is that cumulatively, it kind of all relates to the hardness, which hardness is a, a word that really just means the amount of minerals present in the water. So our hardness, the calcium level, and the magnesium level falls oh. under the very category. Is it? I thought it's like above the very. Uh, well, there's not really, a, so I, we can make our own category. Right. We'll just put J and A. Like very is <laughs> here to here and we're past those yeah, numbers. Yeah, we'll just be like, can you make like a double frown? Like an extra frowny frown? So we have a lot of calcium primarily. Not so much magnesium. We're definitely over the maximum desirable amount but really where we are in a bad spot is calcium. And that's something we're gonna have to take care of. We have PEX plumbing. We're gonna have a lot of PEX type plumbing, but the water heater and the washer and dishwasher, stuff like that, don't do well with calcium. And we've got enough that we could pretty much start a calcium farm. Iron. So iron can create a lot of problems with plumbing. And maybe on top of that, day to day, the least desirable part of iron is odor and flavor. If you guys remember when we first fired up the well and I took a little sip, 
I'm like, there's some iron in this water. And we were told by the driller and by the pump guy, iron's pretty common in our area. So the, the report says that the max desirable amount of iron in the water is 0.3 milligrams per liter. That's not very much, apparently, because we have only 60 times. <laughs> Here, let's make this a frowny face. 60 times that amount. Which is 1.94 1. 1. milligrams per liter. Yeah, I believe in water treatment, iron is something that can definitely be dealt with um, and can be removed or minimized in your water. And I think that's a, a worthwhile investment because it can stain toilets and sinks and your laundry. And like your, your washer drum, if it's got steel in it, will just rot and your laundry now is all rusty looking. So we get the wonderful privilege of dealing with some redonkulous amounts of iron. And finally, the last two things that come from like the mineral report, they give you a manganese content and then they just tell you the pH of the water. And pH, of course, is a function of hydrogen, uh, hydrogen atoms. So manganese, they say you want a maximum of 0 0.05 milligrams per liter. And that's also not very much. The good news is we have 0 0.03. Yay. Six. Ding, 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 ding. So we're, we win on one of we them. We actually have a mineral <laughs> where so we we're don't have range. copious amounts. Yay. So it turns out we're not going to be giving away any of our manganese. You're going to have to go get your own. But if you need rocks, iron, or calcium, we've got plenty of that. So stop by. Uh, pH, where do we come in on pH? This, I don't know what this really has to do with as far as like, I guess I should know, but it's fu a function of pH, like do you want alkaline water or acidic water? And my thinking is because of all the minerals in the water, it makes sense the result that we got. So the desirable range for water is 6.5 to 8.5. And if you know anything about the pH scale, seven is neutral, meaning it's not acidic and it's not alkaline. And so you'd be going acid this way and alkaline or basic this way. Where do we come in? We are 7.29. Uh, yeah, there, there may be a reason to adjust that, but I highly doubt it. I do know that like with a hot tub and stuff like that, when you start heating water, the pH starts to become an issue. And I, I don't even really know why. I think it might have to do more with like cleaning. Like cleaning, when your, your water starts to get really alkaline, I don't know that the cleaning effect is as good, but we'll deal with that when we get there. And the last test that they did, which took longer than the others by several days, was arsenic and nitrates. Arsenic is something they only tell you if it's present or not. So arsenic, we are in good shape. N-A, N-D. We have absent. N-D, I think, stands for not detected. Detectable. And apparently there's actually a standard because like if it's below a certain level, they couldn't detect it. So they don't say there's none, they just say none detected. That's to the cover their butts. That's to cover their butts in case someday do. you find a little bit like, and come well, back. Right. Yeah. Um, as far as nitrates, again, those are naturally occurring and they can also be from fertilizer and whatnot. Um, the desirable max is 10.0 milligrams per liter and we came in at 0 0.43 milligrams per liter. So we're doing fantastic on nitrates. As we built our water system, a lot of people asked all along, are you gonna drill a well? Are you gonna drill a well? And what was actually keeping us from drilling a well uh, at first was access to electricity. Of course, now that we have a well that's 87 feet deep, that decision is completely different, but we totally expected to drill a well that was 200, 300, or 400 feet deep. And we were worried that we wouldn't even be able to get the water out of the well, even if we had one, because it takes so much power. And because we were off grid and we had very limited access to electricity, it just didn't make any sense. We could get water in town and with very minimal electricity, we could fill the cisterns. The other reason we weren't in a hurry to drill a well is this. Just because you have a well 
doesn't mean you can immediately begin using that water. We want to, but it's become obvious through the testing process, which was kind of our intuition based on what we've been told by the driller, the pump guy, and putting our taste buds to work. We've got some work to do to try to figure out what to do to this water. I feel like this is a whole new subject for us. We're not water treatment experts. I'm sure there's a lot of advice out there, but I think what we're looking for is a system that's simple, it's easy to maintain, it's affordable, and doesn't jeopardize all the work that we've already done for the system we built. We did not build the system in lieu of a well. The well was always part of the idea behind the cisterns because we also expected to get a very low flow well. They're extremely common. And so water treatment is something we still don't understand. We're gonna have to do our research and figure that stuff out. But it's working right now, right? The mm -hmm. water system. So what's yep. the hurry to take this well and sabotage yep. all the work that we did before? I think where we're at for the whole year is we want to slow down a little bit. That doesn't mean do less per se, but we have felt sort of behind the house on this entire build where we did do a certain degree of planning before we even started, but in our naive minds, we were gonna get the shell done, be living in here, and then we were gonna finish the house. And we didn't realize how many systems we needed in place or to at least figure out what those systems were gonna be before we even dried the house in. And part of that was because of our decisions to go with ICFs and a timber frame and SIPs, all that stuff. But with going forward, we feel like we don't have any pressing deadlines per se. So instead of making, instead of making a reactionary decision to this, to like, hurry, 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 we have to get the well water in the cistern. We're like, okay, now we know our situation. Now we're gonna take a step back and decide which route we wanna go, which route makes sense. And we still wanna avoid temporary. So if we have a temporary solution that's already working for us, we're probably gonna leave it alone and then maybe talk about our permanent water system. We'll see where that plays into our plan for the year. I would think that with the well, even if we didn't use it for potable or domestic use at all, it's definitely gonna help with the garden because mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure the plants don't care the pH of the water or the hardness or whatever. So if we have to, it'll just ease the burden this year on the system because last year mm -hmm. we did run out of water once because we had no way of really knowing how much water the garden was using. So we may end up using the well just for that purpose alone and not yep. even using it in the house at all until it makes sense to do so. In other words, we're not, we're not stressing about it. I think our kind of big decision treatment system aside, which I'm sure there's a lot of options out there, it's whether we want to treat it before it goes into the cistern or before it comes into the house, in which case untreated water is going into the cistern. I'm sure there's pros and cons of each, but I guess what we want to say is that we, we feel we've, we're at a really good point in life right now. We're really happy to have our well drilled. We're really happy to have the test results back. And I think we're, we're still kind of in rest mode and planning mode right now, but we're really excited to hopefully have an insanely productive year. Soon, well, soon. Or should I say, soon enough. Ah, somewhere under there.